a quaint indie game from 2016, from a golden age of gaming. It emerged another bullet hell slash boss rush type game, but one that I find was slept on more than the rest. I've known of this game personally since about 2018, but not owning a PC or you know having a real incentive to pick it up kind of put a dampener on playing it. Now, at the start of 2022 and my own personal movement into fretting over exams and adulthood, I finally bought it and played it on Twitch. And goodness me, if it wasn't the absolute best experience I've had with gaming for, I mean, really well over a year. Anyway, welcome, one and all, you and me, to Fury. I hear thunder, bitter battle. Fury kept me guessing every damn step of the way. The expositional dump is ripe, but only with clues that make the stunning panoramic interboss stages a constant and intriguing method of telling half of the story. The voice is the main narrator of past and present events, usually relating with each boss you face. No information is definitive, and you only learn why they hate you or why you should put them out of their misery. All we know is that you are locked in a multi-dimensional prison of nine gateways, each with their own palettes, style of music, and boss. The slow and peaceful walks up to the Guardian's arena are the only breaks you get in Fury. And honestly, I love this style of both storytelling and pacing for the game. Fury had absolutely no right to having such an investing and rich story, being, you know, at heart a glorified boss rush. But oh man, did it sail over my expectations and prove its place as one of my all-time favorite storylines in my entire career of gaming. So, this specific video is tailored towards those that want to hear a public opinion on the game to understand it better before buying it. If you wish to hear a review for the entire game, I suggest watching my full review on Fury which I'll link in the description for you. Fury is, at heart, a difficult, arcade-like boss rush, with the average, you know, dodge, melee and ranged attacks, and even charge attacks. The movement is fluid, and it's all around satisfying to play. A game that's easy to learn, and hard to master. I expect the average player could finish the entire game in about four hours, with a handful of deaths. The game is difficult, but unlike games such as Gungeon or Bloodborne, purposefully avoiding comparing it to Dark Souls, I am not that type of review channel. Damage and death is not punishing, which removes most frustration for the game. Rather than having to spend hours mastering the mechanics of the game, Fury forces its player to master each boss and their personal style of fighting. There are two modes in Fury. Close combat, which utilizes swift dodging, parrying, and excellent timing, and a ranged mode. The ranged mode is more of a bullet hell type mode, with more freedom and movement and attacking directly with your ranged weapon. Using these differing styles of combat, the Nine Guardians all have a unique style of combat. Some are almost entirely ranged. Some take place in the ranged mode, but use close quarter combat mechanics to keep you alert while also punishing ranged attacks. 
This allows players to learn how each boss works, and not only when you can attack them, but how to exploit their own attacks against them. This constant change in aesthetic, attacking methods, projectile properties, and even the personality of the boss, something that's usually overlooked in other boss rush games, makes Fury probably one of the very best boss rush games to pick up in our current climate of shitty AAA game titles. Any type of player can pick up this game and enjoy it, and it's worth all the struggle for the meteor impact that is the ending. As I've said, the story tells you nothing, and you defeat about 7 out of 9 Guardians before things even start to come together. I spent most of my time in between each Guardian, speculating and wondering what was going to happen next, and it really made the game 10 times better. Even if you don't like bullet hells or boss rushes, I'd suggest that you play through on Promenade or even turn on Invincible mode just to experience firsthand the world that rivals beauty of any modern high budget game or just play through on Furia mode to relearn each and every Guardian over again. It's honestly worth it if you're looking for a challenge. I loved every second of Fury, and I'm sad to think that I'll and never experience it for the first time again. A pretty obvious observation now that I, I consider it. <laughs> I, I digress. Fury has a perfect balance of challenge, combat flow, and entertainment. It's become one of my favorite all-time stories, and I've heard some ashamedly, I hardly even got a chance to mention the enveloping soundtrack that never fails for a second. I personally give Fury a 46 out of 50, and I implore you, pick up the game, try it out, and experience firsthand the magic that is Fury.